Good evening, Fernwood. It is your unassuming Professor Neil, and it's time for us to go under pressure with another episode of Mary Hartman, Mary Hartman. We are watching episode 308 from June 8th, 1977. Yesterday started some new direction for some of our characters, so let's take a look back. We started yesterday in the factory break room with Tom and Charlie lamenting the loans that they made to George before his venture went bust. George comes in saying that he's planning to talk to Mr. Billingsley to get his job back, and Charlie and Tom say that he can take as much time as he needs to repay their loans, but George promises that he will pay back their loans 100%. Kathy Shumway comes in with a bassinet full of food and snacks, but since the boys have already eaten their lunch, she offers them some brownies. She's excited for the guys to taste them and also to take the 35 cents each that she's charging. But Tom and Charlie's reactions don't leave Kathy feeling very hopeful about her business. George comes back into the break room after having been told that his job is no longer available. And Kathy offers him a sandwich for which she charges him $1.75. Of course, George gets up and walks out. And that leaves everyone wondering exactly how the Shumways are going to earn their keep. Next, we see George at the Capri Lounge ordering drinks for which he cannot pay. And he starts to escalate things with Big Al as Mac walks into the room and starts some escalating of his own. And it looks like we are about to break into a brawl as we cut over to Mary Hartman who is waxing the floor as she gets a visit from Dr. Joyce Brothers, syndicated advice columnist. Mary leads Dr. Brothers on a circuitous path through her kitchen and makes it clear that she has reached out to all of the psychologists and sexologists that she can find, but really wants Dr. Brothers' advice on whether or not she should sleep with Dennis Foley. Joyce thinks that answers like this are not cut and dry, that different doctors may have different opinions, but really for her to tell Mary what she thinks is probably the wrong thing. The only decision that Mary can make should be one that comes from her own self. Mary thanks Joyce for her advice, and then the doctor takes the circuitous route back out of the kitchen. After which point, Mary says that Dr. Brothers told her that she should sleep with Dennis Foley, and she gives him a call. And he has Thursday off, and that is a good time for them to meet. At which point we jump back to the Capri Lounge where George and Mac are having their brawl, which ends with George lying on the floor and Mac coming down to let bygones be bygones. Mac offers to buy George a drink, and then Big Al tells both of them that they were better than what he sees on wrestling on TV. Mac, of course, says that the things you see on TV are phony, and then Big Al suggests that Mac would probably need a manager, at which point George gets an idea and whispers it into Mac's ear. We end the episode with Tom and Mary Hartman making out in bed as they are interrupted by a phone call which puts them a little bit out of the mood. Eventually Mary answers it and it's Dennis Foley, though she covers it by saying that it's Wanda. Dennis reminds Mary that they're going to meet on Thursday, but Mary tells Tom that it's Wanda who's talking about the 1980 election three years from now. Tom and Mary set to resume their makeout session, though it's a bit awkward. They can't quite figure out how they fit together, but eventually the episode ends with them making out again. Everyone, this is the middle of the week. I know we've got some big things promised for tomorrow, but let's get on the way. Mary Hartman! Mary Hartman! Dennis. Hello, Mary. I just thought I'd drop by and tell you I love you. Coffee? No.
but I will have a kiss. I'm sorry I only have instant. I thought you were boycotting coffee. I am. There are just some times that really cry out for it. I love you. Do you want to say it back to me? I really wish I knew the answer to that question. Just make up an answer then. Make up the answer yes. Then, if it turns out wrong, you can always change it. Can I? All right. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> I love you. I could always take it back, though, right? I would never hold a person to an I love you. I don't know what's happening to me. And the I love you was enough. Dennis, I said I love you. But I can always take it back. Anytime you want. So what if they didn't love you the first time? You're perfect now, and they'll just eat you up. Yeah. Yes, everything's so good. The sandwiches and the brownies. Hi, Mary. Hi. Oh. Oh, what a relief. Do you know I actually almost like this apartment? It was so hard to tell at Howie's funeral. Doesn't that make you feel a little bit uncomfortable? I mean, doesn't it make you feel like you're on person to person and the whole country's watching you? Yeah, I know what you mean, but but it's the only place I own. Oh. That's nice. Ah, uh, look, Mary, uh, I'd I'd really love to chat, but can we do this some other time? Another time? I'm not sure. I'd really like to get this settled before Thursday. Uh, what settled? Oh, it's nothing, it's nothing. We can do it some other time. We can do it any time you're free. Any time at all. As long as it's before Thursday. Uh-huh. Look, I, I have to get to the plant and sell these lunches before they're... Uh-huh. They well, done. I certainly know when to keep you. You go to the plant and sell those lunches like you do every day. You do go and sell those every day, don't you? That would include Thursdays, too, wouldn't it? So what do you leave the apartment for? What, what do you estimate? Two, three hours? Uh, Mary, what's going on? Um, uh, don't you have to get to work? Uh, no. Not until you tell me exactly what you're up to. Um, uh, gee, th those brownies look like they're cooling off, you know, awfully fast here. Uh, uh, and I see uh, what looks to me like a scrambled egg sandwich in there. And I'll tell you, Kathy, as an experienced housewife, uh, one thing about a scrambled egg sandwich, you eat it while it's very hot or you don't need it at all. Mm-hmm. Uh, do you want to uh, borrow this apartment? Uh, what, what do you, uh, charge for one of these, huh? Thirty-five cents. Oh. Okay. Here you go. Keep the change. <clears throat> Mary, would this have anything to do with Dennis Foley? How did you know? Uh, well, look, Mary, you may be an experienced, experienced housewife, but I'm experienced in human relations. And, uh, you want to borrow this apartment to, uh, meet Foley, is that right? I don't mean to sound critical, Kathy, but these brownies need a lot more shortening. Please don't tell Tom, Kathy. Look, you're going to lose him if you keep messing around. Oh, Kathy, come on. Dennis and I don't have anything in mind. You know, I would tell you something. If this, anything like this should happen in any way whatsoever, all of us are going to be much better for it. I mean, really. Oh, yeah, because you hit the sack with uh, Foley, right? Oh, Kathy! You didn't actually think that Dennis and I are going to do anything sordid. Oh, no. You're just going to sit around and talk, right? Well, that's right. Huh. Well, look, there's nothing I can say. Dennis, is your mind twisted, and you're going to do it. So you can use the apartment. But look, you're my sister, and I love you, and I really don't want you getting hurt. 
Oh, Kathy, I love you, too. I really do. Thank you so much. Oh, really? And I swear, this has absolutely nothing to do with sex. And on that, you just have to take my word and give me your apartment. Okay. Okay. Kathy? Uh, 35 cents, but you can owe me. Kathy. Keep the change. Okay. thing to do to come over and help Kathy with her housework oh I was just uh, you know adding a few little things that's all well here let me help you uh, what are you doing here Ma? oh I come over now and then for the memories you mean of you and Mac no for the heat water and electricity the things we don't have at home you know now that your daddy went broke oh you, you wouldn't be uh, planning to come over and use the uh, heat, water, and electricity on Thursday, would you? I forgot my money changer. Uh, what's Thursday? Shh, nothing. Uh -huh. Oh, well, we didn't take much time in preparing for the rendezvous, did we? But did we have to get Mother involved? Oh, Kathy, I'm not involved. I will, once you tell me what you're talking about. Or not talking about. Oh, well, I think she can take it. Well, you see, Mom, Dennis is coming over here on Thursday. Mary's meeting him here. Mom! How could you? Kathy, how could you let her do this? Mom, I'm not meeting him here for what you think I'm meeting him here for. Oh, no, of course not. These are just conversational pieces. Well, uh, they are. I mean, they, these, these candles, you know what these are for? More light. That's all they're for. That's for more light. And these flowers, one, two, three, four flowers, just to control the oxygen. That's all. This and this sweet little coverlet here. This is just to cover the bed in case Dennis should get his head filled with any kind of funny ideas at all. In fact, I myself may not even be here. Oh, gee. And I thought there was going to be some sort of things going on. Mm -hmm. Mary, Mary, don't you think that the plants uh, would control the oxygen better if they were real ones? Hmm? Well... Where the hell is she? It's just like a Shumway woman. You can't count on them, see? Tom, don't talk like that. Well, it's true. Look at Martha, the way she ditched George. And Kathy, I mean, every time you turn around, she's with another guy, she can't even remember his name from one week to the next. Tom, you're just trying to work yourself into some kind of state where you're worrying about Mary leaving you. Now, forget it. I am, I'm not leading up to anything, Charlie. And anyhow, Martha came right back to George like a, like a horse to water. But he'll never be the same again. When Martha left him, he fell apart. He gambled everything on that bug gun and lost. Everything. He's a broken man. I'd probably plotting ways to get back at Mac right now. I tell you, Charlie, if those two guys ever meet, it is going to be ugly. Yeah. What's that? Uh, 
That was terrific, Mac. I'll tell you something. Tomorrow now, six laps around the plant. But no more counting jogging. I'm losing my voice. George, what the hell is going on here? I thought you wanted a piece of his hide. I have got a piece of it. 20%. I am now the trainer and manager of the best body wrestler in the entire Midwest. Wrestling? George, we don't have any wrestling in Fernwood. There will be tomorrow night. I'm putting 500 bucks to anybody that can tear Mac apart. 500 bucks? Of what? Of what money you don't have? <laughs> <laughs> you see, that's your trouble, Tom. You don't think big. You'll never make it in show business. Show business? <laughs> yeah, that's what, uh, that's what old George thinks it's about tomorrow. Capri Land's gonna be like. <laughs> okay. Down the hatch, Mac. Oh, it smells terrible. Oh, that's my man. <laughs> Just think of all that publicity. The round robin at the Capri, right? Everybody in Fernwood fighting to get at those 500 bucks, huh? Huh? Where the hell's the money coming from, George? No place, because Mac ain't gonna lose. Now, when you talk big money, you get attention. It's just one of the tricks of the trade. That uh, sounds crazy to me. Yeah, I'd be there as it may, but I hope you'll all be there tomorrow night at the Capri yeah. when we launch our careers. <laughs> I would miss it for the world. Are you kidding? For $500 that doesn't even exist, I'll be there. <laughs> okay, Mac. Lunch is over. Let's start cracking. Uh, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, one, two, one, two. Uh -huh. Hey, oh, hot dog. Hey, Max, zip up your jack and sweat a little bit. Come on, George. Easy. I'll Here, see you. I'll see you tomorrow night George. at the Capri. We'll be there. Don't worry. We'll be there with a... <laughs> Are you kidding? Huh? You want to wrestle? Martha, you? Martha leaving him broke him up, huh? He's, a, he's That's a whole change of life he's got there. He hasn't been so bouncy since Martha left him. He yeah. keeps coming bouncing back after one disaster <laughs> after another disaster. Well, I just hope he keeps bouncing back this time. I hope so. Speaking about disasters, where is Kathy with that lunch? What would I tell you? Huh? Did I tell you? You cannot, you can't count on a Shumway woman. You can't. But I, yeah. See this Twinkie? Hmm? I've been saving it for just an emergency just like this. Here, you want to have? Go ahead. Oh, my baby's gone, gone for good. Actual for bad, but I say for good. Because it's good to say good. Better's even better. A happy person goes to heaven, but a sad one, the devil's gonna get her. So I smile and say, thank you, Lord. I'm happy and I'm filled with joy. And I'm still glad, even though I'm sad that you took my junior baby boy. Thanks a lot, Lord. See, now I'm making an effort now, aren't I? See? <laughs> uh, come on in. Hi, Hi Mary. Hi, how are you, hun? I'm fine. Hi. I'm just here working on a hit. You going to the plant with all them goodies? Uh, yeah, but listen, there's, there's something I have to talk to you about. Something more important, like saving Mary's marriage. Well, I guess I'm a good one to talk about, you know, seeing as how I'm her very best and probably most concerned friend on the planet Earth. Uh, so I'd sincerely, uh, you know, you better get to the plant with all that stuff, otherwise there's going to be a huge growl in my little precious, adorable, but empty Charlie's stomach. <laughs> what? Uh, I didn't fix his lunch today because he's going to buy it from you, you know, so you could save your family from starving to death and financial embarrassment. Well, thanks a lot, but, but what about Mary? Oh, hon, she's going to be just fine. Sure, she's fine. She doesn't know that her marriage is falling apart. Oh, and that goes on with Merrick, I guess, just about every other week now. And she and Tom are still lovingly together. And that's the way it's going to stay. See, everything's just going to be A-OK. -okay. Mm -hmm. You know something, Kathy? Uh, this afternoon, I made a conscientious uh, decision and kind of pledge, really, you might say, that I was going to look absolutely on the right side of everything. You ought to do that, too. Isn't life wonderful? <laughs> no, it's not. Well, it's good to say good. Uh, Loretta. Better Loretta. Even better. Loretta. Mary is going to bed with Dennis. Kathy.
Dorothy, honey, rumors, my gosh, them is all rumors. You mean to tell me you're listening to that sordid junk about your pure sweet sister? Look, she told me herself. Well, Kathy, that's just talk, even if Mary's the one saying it. Oh, well, I don't think they'll be doing too much talking on Thursday night in my apartment. Thursday night? Mm. Well, Kathy, I'll admit this don't look too good, but let me tell you something. And this is, this is a pledge to you. I have every confidence in the world that everything is going to turn out just peachy keen. You know, as a matter of fact, I'm, I'm positive of it. So you ought to be, too. Now, don't you feel better? No. Kathy, don't you have any faith at all in the Lord up above us here? No, not when Dennis Foley is down here. Uh, Lord, she didn't mean any uh, intentional comparison between the two of you at all. Really. Look, Loretta, don't you care that Mary is throwing her life away? Hon, if she was, I would be, but she ain't. Now, I know Mary, Kathy. I know her. I trust her. And let me tell you, she would not do no dirt to those that she loved, okay? Now, you, on the other hand... What? You, of all people that knows Mary, should be most tolerant of her desires, hon. Because, I mean, let's be real honest here. Now, you, you personally have witnessed some of the seamier sides, up through no fault of your own, I, I admit, but you have experienced such things as, let's say, deaf mutes. Mm -hmm. We're talking about uh, priests, pregnancies for prophets. Uh, look, that's me we're talking about. The town expects that of me. This is me. <sighs> oh, Loretta, what's the use? Kathy, I want to thank you an awful lot for coming by and seeing me. Oh, thank you. you. You've been a lot of help. Well, honey, I just want you to know that it's been a pleasure. Yeah. Bye now. Yeah. Well, it's good to say good. Better's even better. A happy person ends up in heaven, but a sad one. The devil's gonna get her, so I smile and say, hey, thank you, Lord. I'm happy and I'm filled with joy, and I'm still glad, even though I'm sad, that you took my junior baby boy. Well, oh. I got it, honey, I got it. I got the ad in the paper. Uh, 500 smackaroonies to anybody that lays mac on the mat. <laughs> you know that creep over at the pawn shop? He only gave me 10 bucks on the sewing machine, so I, uh, I had to hawk my wedding ring. Joel? No, don't worry, don't worry. We ain't gonna lose. We ain't gonna lose. Oh, uh, George, I, I'm getting a feeling. Hey, I meant to ask you something about that. Now, you haven't had any premonition about how many millions of dollars we're gonna make, have you? Uh, no, no, not that feeling. It's a feeling of doom, da doom, doom. Oh, well, in that case... Did you have any dream initiative about how many thousands of dollars we're making? Hey, uh, hey, oh, hi, hi. Hi, George, Martha. Hi. I, I, I thought oh, I hi. saw your candles. Yeah, I was just asking her if she was having a dream initiative about uh, a little side bet for tomorrow night's fight. Uh-huh, what is, what is that? Is that something like, uh, a, like, a, like a psychic thing? Like Jean Dixon predicting Paul Anka's gonna get a facelift? Oh, yeah, she's got the power. She's got the power. Listen, she told me that my socks would turn pink in the laundry. Take a look at that. Huh. But he wouldn't listen to me. Well, uh, listen, uh, maybe you can tell me where Mary is then, because she's been pulling a vanishing act lately. Oh, well, uh, well, she, she probably, she probably got stomach pains. You know, something that made her go out and take a long walk. Something that was too embarrassing to talk about. I don't mm. think so, Mom. Then why did you ask me? My premonitions are, are from their own free will. Ooh, 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 ooh. Oh, ooh. Oh, 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 is that it? Is it about the fight? It's huh? Kathy. It is Kathy. It is doom, doom. Hi, everybody. So, what's everybody looking at? Does anybody want a brownie? So, Tom, what are you doing here this late? I'm looking for Mary. Mary? <clears throat> yeah, my wife, Mary. Oh, she's okay. Nothing to get crazy about. I'm sure she's fine. Wait a minute. Who's getting crazy? I mean, what is it with this, this family? I mean, every time I ask about my wife, you say I'm getting crazy. What is it, crazy to get crazy about one's own wife not knowing where she is? Tom, there's no need to get so blustery. Who's blustery? I'm not blustery. 
Oh, listen, Tom, she's probably just going through a phase. Ma, could you help me put these in the refrigerator? Tom, come on. Listen, I know my daughter and I love her. And let me tell you something. She's the best wife for you you could possibly find. What are you trying to tell me? You're trying to tell me not to worry? Is that it, George? That's right. Even if she is having an affair with Sergeant Foley. What? Mom. Mom. Mm -hmm. Mom, is that true? What George just said? Is she having an affair? Is Mary having an affair with Sergeant Foley? Oh. What? What? I don't know, Tom. You can't prove it by me. Looks like things will start paying off very soon. We start the episode with Mary sitting in a daze, not sure what to say or think or do. At least that's how I perceive her. And she gets one of those regular visits from Dennis Foley, who tells Mary that he loves her, which is something that he said before. And I honestly think that that is a sincere truth and gives Mary the ability to say that she loves him but that she can take it back which i think is just enabling her to say something that she's really holding on to and i know that she has very real feelings that she's trying to sort through right now even if it's an honest thing it's kind of putting everyone else's life in a mess for her to to address this not address this but for her to act on this is really really hurtful to everyone else if the feelings are real i don't know where everyone else is right so not that you have to live your life by everyone else's feelings but you've made promises mary so that's something that still needs to be addressed if you ask me and we cut right over to Kathy's apartment and she's got her bassinet full of food to bring over to the factory. And Mary shows up and hints pretty obviously that she wants to borrow Kathy's apartment and Kathy knows exactly why Mary wants this. Mary's not ready to admit it, but that's exactly what Mary's doing. And as soon as Kathy leaves, Mary starts redecorating in ways that are not just borrowing the apartment ways. Then Martha shows up and Mary feels the need to cover up again because she's very conflicted about what's going on, what she is actually thinking of doing, which she has not said out loud yet. But because she has not said it out loud, it is screaming out of her exactly what she's planning. Then Kathy comes in and confirms that Mary is meeting Dennis Foley and that it's not just for tea and a chit chat. Then we're back at the factory with Tom and Charlie who are waiting for Kathy to show up with lunch even though they maybe didn't like the brownies that they had yesterday. And this is Tom complaining about the Shumway women which Charlie picks up I think rightly that he's partially including Mary in that, that he can't depend on the Shumway women, which means Kathy in this instance, but also the feelings that he has for Mary. He's never said anything like that before. Tom has never said something about the Shumway women before. So it should stand out that he's criticizing them at the moment. Some of this is related to the feelings that he's having for Mary pretty clearly we then see, you know, for me, the the highlight of the episode is the wrestling angle that George and Mac are taking on because Tom and Charlie know last time that they saw them, they were holding them apart from beating on each other at the Capri. And now it's sort of like they're making references to Rocky with George being the Mickey of the Rocky combination and having him jog around the factory six times and having Mac drink three raw eggs, at least that's how many I thought I saw in the cup. That's fairly clearly a Rocky reference, but you know, this is a wrestling angle, not a boxing match that's coming up. And 
Apparently we have big plans tomorrow night at the Capri where they have offered 500 bucks for anyone who can take Mac down. And it is of course a gamble and not something that they have set aside. I don't know where the money is coming from. Where, like, Even if Mac wins all the matches, I'm not sure what profit is gained here. Maybe it's simply promotion. It's not like anyone's talking about charging money at the gate, you know, at the door for this match. And well, this is something that I expect we will find out tomorrow, maybe over the next few days. But it's a question, you know, Mac is pretty burly. He is really strong as we have seen. Who knows who may show up for this bout? And then we see Loretta on her little stage in the living room, which I don't feel like we've seen her on since very early in season one. And the only thing that was missing from this scene to make me think it was exactly season one was seeing Loretta in a pink nightie on that stage. Which, to be fair, is probably completely unnecessary, other than to remind us of where she was in very early season one. But this is really not a scene about Loretta singing because Kathy comes in and spreads the gossip. She shares the chisme that uh, Mary is going to sleep with Dennis. Mary didn't ever say that out loud, but Mary's actions, as I mentioned earlier, are screaming that that's exactly what she plans. Loretta is really dismissive of Kathy bringing this in and also goes through a fairly abbreviated list of the men that Kathy has been with, which if you didn't watch any of last week's episodes, that was something that we covered all of last week. But hey, good that we got a little review, but this is Loretta sort of shaming Kathy for her past, and Kathy's not really bothered by her past, except she's concerned that Mary is making a choice that will blow up her life. And if it's not Mary's life, and this is me personally talking, not Kathy, but if Mary blows up the life, maybe if she goes with Dennis, she will have something happy down the road, but the people that she leaves behind could be in a really big mess. However, Loretta isn't having this conversation. She's really dismissive to Kathy, who, you know, has a right to be worried. And then we're at the Shumways, and this is a, a few different storylines coming together. Obviously, George is excited for the wrestling match, and Martha is still feeling her premonitions. I love little... Uh, weird pronunciations on this show like I love it when Loretta says temporarily because that's just amusing she hasn't said it for you know months at this point however back to the scene and Tom comes in looking for Mary and wondering what's going on and all of the Shumways know since Martha knows that Mary was planning to get together have a rendezvous with Dennis Kathy's comments about Mary and the fact that everyone in the family knows that she's going to see Dennis gives Tom's worries a sense of direction. And I think that's a direction that will be paid off tomorrow. So I expect we will have some big bangs to look out for. And now we're on to the questions of the week, which I asked back in December. If you don't remember the question this week, it was which are your favorite supporting sympathetic side characters and our third response is from ariel malanga from what i've seen so far it's little garth patty and dewey patty and dewey are straight up victims and philip was trapped in a family with a violent father and terrorized mother philip was a short-lived character on this show and he was really sympathetic kind of taking the side of his mother in the brutal attacks that she got from Garth and also befriending Heather in a way that no other character really has on this show. Heather never really had a character in this show that could take her side. Very often she would reference a friend named Trudy that showed up once in the uh, hostage crisis of the early series, but Philip was the character that sort of took her and befriended her and they started with kind of an icy relationship where every time Mary and 
Patty would try to introduce them, Heather would just straight up walk away, but when left to their own devices, Heather and Philip made very close friends. Of course, certain feelings and emotions escalate in that relationship up until it ends, and I suppose the only thing we can do is watch those stories because I ain't going to tell you what happened. So thank you so much everyone for watching with me. Thank you so much for leaving your thoughts, feelings, and impressions in the comments. Thank you for going under pressure with me and we will see you tomorrow night in Fernwood.